Hey friends, it's Deanna here, and today we are making the Be Dreamy uh, dress pattern. So I'm really excited because this is a very cute dress. I've already made them before, and I'm just making more because it's just amazing. So I figured we'd do it together. Um, so I am making, I'm going to be making the high-low option. I am doing pockets, and I am doing one flounce sleeve. I'm doing the short flounce. And before I get started with the sewing, usually I already have my pattern all cut out and such, and I already have most of it cut out, um, but I wanted to show you how to cut out your sleeve um, because it's on the double fold, and sometimes I have a hard time figuring out the double fold situation. So I figured I'd go ahead and show us all so we can do it together. So I'm gonna point you down, and then we're gonna do it, okay? Oh, before we get started, let me remind you about our fun fan giveaway. $50 Elliot Mag gift certificate monthly. Um, all you have to do is subscribe. So pause right now. If you haven't subscribed yet, pause, subscribe, and comment below. Let me know what you love about our tutorials, what you love about our patterns. Um, let me know you subscribed, and then you're entered for a giveaway, and we give away every single month. So you have a chance to win. All right, let's do it. Here I am pointing you down and here's my fabric and here's my piece of pattern. So I just got a little piece of fabric because I wanted to show you, I didn't want it to be huge and you'd be like, what? Okay, so this is my grain line and my stretch is going that way. So if I stretch, that's the, the biggest stretch, I guess. It's, uh, the best stretch is going that way. So this is my grain line going up and down and I'm going to fold it once. So here's my fold right here on this side. And I wanna make sure that my sleeve fits completely on there. So here's my one fold and my sleeve fits all the way to the edge of that. Then I'm going to grab my fabric and fold down again. So now I've got two folds on one side and one fold on the top. And I'm gonna put my sleeve on the fold and the fold right here. Make sure, I always pick up and make sure that, yep, I have enough fold over that my sleeve is gonna fit all the way, okay? And then we're gonna pin down my fabric. I have magnets. And um, then we're gonna cut. And that's it. That will be on the fold, double fold. I'm gonna show you what that looks like. Here's one of my sleeves. I already cut my other sleeve, but I wanted to show you um, how easy it really is to make a flouncey flounce flounce sleeve. Flounce sleeve. Ooh, how beautiful is that fabric? Ooh, I'm so excited about this dress. So excited. All right, T.O. So now that we've got everything cut out, uh, we're going to get started. Um, so first things first, we're going to grab our bodice. Um, here is my, this is I think going to be my outer because I just love the position of this flower and I'm using the same fabric for the liner and the outer so um, yeah so it really is just about what I like about it. Um, I know I've been asked this before like what kind of fabric to use for your liner. If it's a darker fabric, I will use the same fabric uh, as long as it's not too heavy. If, it's, if I'm using something that's really heavy, I want to use something lighter on the inside. But if it's like, this is like um, ITY, so um, uh, I think it's ITY, yeah. And um, if it's, so it's lighter, so I'm going to use the same, especially because it's also a darker fabric. If it was lighter, then I want to stay in the same weight, um, but do like a nude or a um, white liner underneath it so I don't have my pattern showing through. Um, like if I'm doing something that's light and it has a pattern, um, if I put something behind it, if I put the same fabric behind it, it has the, the, the pattern also on it, it might show through. So I will do like, I have some nude double brush poly that I keep in hand. Um, actually nude ITY would be great to keep in hand. Um, some, uh, thin lining. Um, I know that you usually use that for bathing suit, but it has a great stretch and I think 
you can basically use it for anything. I don't know, don't quote me on that. Um, so if you can't, let me know below because I love constructive criticism. Let me know when I'm doing something wrong. I want to hear it because I want to change it if I am doing something wrong. I don't want to do something wrong. Um, so, okay. Here we have our front piece off our bodice and here's our back piece so you got to put them right sides together on top of each other meeting at the shoulder seam at the shoulder edge raw edge and we're gonna make a seam um, we're gonna sew those shoulders together and I'm doing this to my what I think is gonna be my outer um, but I already did it to my other two pieces so so if you have a diff different fabric for your liner and your outer you're doing the two the liners front and back together at the shoulders, the outers front and back together at the shoulders, right sides together. Um, I'm going to use my serger for this project. Um, I love my serger. If you don't have a serger, you can do a um, any kind of stretch stitch on your sewing machine, a lightning bolt stitch, a zigzag stitch, those work just fine. But um, if you can, I'd say, if you're working with knits a whole lot, get yourself a serger. Um, if you can afford it, it is such a, uh, it makes everything so much easier. Um, I, uh, this one I inherited and I did save to buy another one and I messed it up, which makes me want to cry. So I need to send it to the sh shop and I haven't been able to, but this one works just great. So that's good. I've also heard people look on marketplace or even thrift stores will have some great sergers because unfortunately, uh, not, I mean, I think it's more now, which is great, but not a lot of people used to sew. So like, um, if they got it from somebody and then they're like, no, oh, I don't sell it, take it to like a secondhand store or whatever. So you can get yourself a great deal. And I know people have done that. Um, so now we're going to open the front and the back and I'm going to grab my other ones, my liner. You see how this one, the flower is kind of more hidden. I like the fact that this flower is a little bit more open. So maybe I'll use that as a outer. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and grab my other two pieces and I'm going to line them up on top, right sides together of my uh, outer. So my liner to my outer, right sides together at the neckline. Now remember, you got to match up and make sure that they match. Um, you want to make sure that you have the front neck neckline with the front neckline of the outer and the liner because the back is higher and the front is lower so you want to make sure that they match um and we're gonna meet at the seam at the shoulder seams first line them up and then um we're gonna go all the way around lining up that raw edge and they should uh match unless you, you did some wrong cutting, but they should, if you cut it right, they should match. Okay, so I'm matching, I'm pinning, you can pin, clip, whatever you have. I'm just pinning that neckline and we're gonna sew it together. Um, you can do, a lot of people just do uh, even if you have serger, a lot of people just do zigzag stitch right here at the step because then you can kind of trim the edge. I found that I just do it with my serger and it works just fine. Um, I've done it before and I've done it with my serger and I am fine with it. And um, i rather do my serger because sometimes my, especially with this, um, hold on one second, especially with this fabric that's a little bit thinner, my sewing machine tends to want to eat it. So um, I'm going to do my serger. I'm sorry, I was turning my fan off because as much as it gets warm in here when I'm sewing, if I turn my fan on, sometimes it like shakes my camera, my pattern goes everywhere, um, my fabric goes over, so I turned it off. I might regret that in a little bit. I'm, you might see me get up and, and turn it back on if I start sweating. Okay, so I'm gonna sew those two together, right sides together, and I always start at the back because if I'm gonna have a seam, an edge that meets, I'm gonna do it at the back. And like I said, I'm just using my serger, but um, a lot of people uh, prefer to use um, sewing machine at this point. Not me, because I am rebellious. Um, if you do use a, 
uh, sewing machine and you do a stretch stitch, you can, once this step is done, you can go with, uh, what are those scissors called? What are those uh, ones that make the, they make the, uh, the little snipping little things, like shearing scissors? What are they called? Is that what they're called? Pinning. Pinning scissors? I can't remember what they're called. Anyway, if you have one of those, you will know the name and you know what I'm talking about. And you can go in with them and like do the little clippings all around the neck so that when you turn it around, which we're about to do right now, um, they, the neckline sits nice and not bumpy. So now I'm just fitting it into inside of it. So like that, I like so. See, now we've got a lined top. Now I'm gonna go ahead and steam that neckline. And you can open it up and steam it. Like so, just to give it a nice steam right here. Always make sure when you're gonna steam that you have your iron at the right setting so you don't end up burning your fabric. That's always so sad to me. And I've done it before. There's the evidence on my iron. I should clean my iron. Um, yes, I think, was it swim? I can't remember. I, I'm pretty sure I've done it to swim a couple times because I always forget that I need to change my setting on my iron when I'm doing swim. And not only my setting, but if I just do a lot of steam, and that usually does good. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead again, and uh, now that we steamed that, we just wanted to steam it because uh, steaming helps a lot with the, uh, when the neck band and all that stuff. So go ahead and give it a good steam. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to, so it's open like this, see there's the hole. We're gonna grab, this is my outer. I'm gonna grab my outer front and my outer back and knead them together. And when you do that, you see the outer, the liner come out on the bottom. Okay, so here's my liner, it's up here. And my liner is up here. I know it sounds kind of confusing. So I'm gonna do first, I'll do my liner. So right sides together of your liner sides. So you match up those sides. And you're gonna sew them together. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for my, so I've got my one liner right here, liner to liner. Okay, and then um, outer to outer. So I'm gonna pin this one, and I'm gonna show you how if you turn it, here it is, the liner right here too. Hope that made sense. The liner to the liner and the outer to the outer. You still wanna keep them together. Uh, right now, there doesn't seem different because I'm using the same fabric for both, but uh, if you're using different fabrics, then you will be able to easily see that they're different. But yes. The liner to the liner and the and the outer to the outer. So you just uh, pin them together and we're gonna sew the sides. Probably like, you already said that 10 times. Here it is, okay? Uh, so now I'm gonna go ahead and sew those and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, T-O, they are sewn at the sides, okay? Now we're gonna flip it right back. There we go, here it is. Let me make sure I have the right outer. Hmm, is this the one? No, this is not the one I wanted to use. That's my liner, so I'm gonna flip it. There we go. I wanted that flower, right? Which one's better, this flower or this one? And I'm gonna have to decide because it's not reversible. I don't know, maybe I'm liking this side better because the flower is kind of too obvious. This is the hardest part of the whole project, okay? Try and figure out which one I want it. Yeah, I think I want it the other way. Now that I look at that flower, I don't want it to be like, if you know what I mean. Okay, <laughs> sorry guys. I got my flounce and we're gonna go ahead and to put that on. Now, um, the uh, flounce sleeves are meant to be raw at the bottom. Uh, this is, this knit fabric, it doesn't fray. Woven tends to fray, but knit doesn't. 
so we can leave it raw but if you didn't want to leave it raw you can go ahead and hem it um, it is up to you I'm just leaving it raw so what I'm gonna do is I am going to go ahead and grab my shoulder and we can go ahead and quarter our flounce so that way we know where to attach what and how I quarter is I do little snippets here and there in the corners so like the two corners are right there and then I'm gonna match those two up front and back and go to the one side and that's my quarter and then go to the other side and that's my other quarter and then I've got my um, shoulder I mean my arm side right here and so I've got my shoulder seam and my uh, my um, armpit seam and I so those are my sides my front and back and then I grab and I line them together and I go to one side and that will be my one quarter so that's where I will match one of my quarters and then I'll go to the other side and that's where I match my other quarter yes I just like my finger because I don't have any of that um, gooey stuff that helps you put the fabrics apart okay so now that I did that I'm going to put my flounce right sides together with my uh, 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 arm side and I'm gonna meet at those quarter points so I'm gonna match up the quarter points to remember right sides together and you're attaching it to the both uh, the liner and the outer because this is where you're closing them up together okay and they should you shouldn't have to stretch or anything the only reason why I did the quarter points is just because I want to make sure that I match them up correctly but you shouldn't even have to like stretch or anything like that should be just easy peasy easy peasy okay right sides together and we're gonna go ahead and sew. I always start at the bottom and I am surging stretch stitch or some yeah some kind of stretch stitch will do the trick going all the way around make sure you catch all three layers the liner and outer and the flounce almost there halfway there and really we are almost done with our dress. This dress is so beautiful, so flattering. Everyone I've seen it on looks amazeballs. So there is our flounce sleeve. There's my one flounce sleeve. How beautiful is that? Ooh, I can't wait. I'm gonna go ahead and do my other flounce sleeve and then we'll move on to our next step. Alrighty, righty -o. my sleeves are done and I am excited because it's going to be amazing. So now we move on to our skirt and first thing is pockets and um, I think every dress needs pockets. Just, just me, like this one, ha this one has pockets. You can put everything in there. Um, but anyway, so um, yes, so if you're not doing pockets, then you can skip this step. But if you are doing pockets, here we go. So you grab your pattern, and in your pattern, it shows you where to place the pocket. So I'm going to put that over my pattern, match it up. Choop, 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 choop. Here it is, right here. I'm going to put my pen, mark it, and throw that away. No, don't throw it away because you might want to make more and um, you will because this dress is amazing. So then I'm going to match up right sides together of the pocket with the right side of the skirt, the raw edge. And you want the pocket to be facing down like so. So when you put your hands, this bottom part is hanging down like a teardrop. Um, and then we're going to sew the raw edge to our skirt bottom um i was gonna say something but i forget if it was important information then i'm sorry I, I forgot it i've got one of those brains all right i'm gonna sew this on oh if you're only doing so, so you gotta do that to all four pockets but if you're only doing uh one pocket you only have to do two the front and the back 
but make sure you sew it to the right side, the same size. You don't want to sew it to this front and this back and then you have like half a pocket here, half a pocket here because that won't work. So make sure that you sew it to the right side. So now that our pocket is sewn on, you can go ahead and steam that opening. So it'll be nice and smoothy smooth when you um, sew it on. And you're gonna grab your, here's my front. And the reason why I know this is my front is because I am doing the, the high-low so you can see that this is my, just my little piece. Can you see it? It goes up right here. And um, so then I'm going to grab my other side where are you? This is my back skirt. I already sewed the back, the other side, so that's why it's right here, right on top. Uh, because I didn't think you guys want to sit there and watch me sew the whole side, both of them, and take forever. So I'm just showing you on this side. And you're lining up these pockets all the way around. Now, if you don't have pocket, you'll just go straight down. But if you have a pocket, you go around the pocket and down. And I pin my pockets together and all the way around the pocket. Why am I singing so much today? I don't know. Maybe I'm in a good mood. I'm in a good mood because I am loving this dress and I am actually loving the dress I'm wearing today. This is the sunny days. Uh, no, not the sunny day. Sorry. This is the uh, Monday morning dress and I made it um with the true beauty skirt so it's a long skirt and i don't know why i'm so into long dresses right now i was i used to love them before and then i like eh, wasn't for a while but now it's like all the fabrics that are coming out all this like rib knits and beautiful fabrics are like making me want long dresses again so i'm like this is like my third long dress that i've made in the last like couple weeks so yeah I am like into it right now but I am like loving it and it looks so beautiful so I'm like I just I can't help myself I'm sorry okay so we're going all the way around and all the way down like I said I already did all my pockets on all my sides I already sewed my other side so now I'm just doing this one and literally all my talking I probably could have done it and um so on the other side the same amount of time okay when I get to the pocket I like to pull tight and make it straight at the corner so that way I don't have a hole right there sometimes if you try to go around it right there at the seam it, it's really hard so you want I just pull it straight now I'm going all the way around this pocket Again, here I am, back to the bottom. I'm gonna pull it straight and go straight. So that way my pocket doesn't have any gaps. We don't wanna lose any chains. We don't wanna lose our phone. We don't wanna lose our keys. We don't wanna lose anything. So we wanna make sure that our pocket is sewn together. And I'm going all the way down, down this side edge. Side edge. I do pin kind of farther away from my fabric with certain fabrics. With some you can do that, with some you can't. Um, with this fabric you can. I pin it kind of away from the fabric. That way I have... The reason why you see so much uh, allowance is because when I go around my pocket, I make sure that they are uh, not leaving any holes. So sometimes I eat a little bit of my pocket, but I really don't care if I eat any of my pocket because it really doesn't matter if it's a smaller pocket than intended. Um, just because I want to make sure that there's no holes. That's more important to me. Okay. Anyway, so, um, Oh, some fabrics are easier. Uh, I pin farther away because they kind of stay together. So there's no, it doesn't really matter. But the fabrics that don't stay together, then I, I have to pin it closer. And the reason why I pin it farther away is so I don't have to move every pin the whole time. And then now we move on to hemming. And um, we do a half an inch allowance all the way around. So just grab your fabric and you do a half an inch. Steam a half an inch all the way around. 
And when I do this, uh, kind of, it goes a little bit like in a circle-ish. I just kind of pull it a little bit as I'm steaming it. I don't measure my hem anymore. Um, I've come, I've become very familiar with what my half an inch allowance is. So I don't measure anymore. So yes, so you would go all the way around. Steaming, 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 and then hemming. When you get to this corner, you just fold it down and go up. And you can just trim that little bit right there if, it, if it's awkward for you. Like where that point came. I'm just trimming it right there. Do you see that? Right there at the corner. We just went around the corner. And I just trimmed that little point right there. Where my front and back met together and then I'm just gonna steam. Okay, for hemming you can use a double needle, you can use a zigzag stitch if you like. I'm using, I'm going to be using my cover stitch. Uh, if you have a cover stitch, you can do that, but if you don't um, and you don't like the zigzag look, I will tell you this. I have done before and you know, don't, it's not the proper way. But when it's a loose hem like this, when it's not tight, I have done a longer, a longer straight stitch. And then um, I could do two, two straight stitches right next to each other to give it that double needle look if you'd like. Uh, because it's not gonna be, it doesn't need to stretch because it's already a bigger, uh, um, it's bigger, uh, I'm trying to think of the word. It's like it, it's big at your feet. It doesn't need to stretch. Then I will do that. So uh, I have done that before. So if you want to do that, go ahead and do that. Um, if, yeah. So because I just don't like the look of the zigzag all the time, especially on a dressy dress like this. All right. So you will go ahead and, and hem, but we're gonna move on. I'll hem later. That way you don't have to watch me sitting there hemming. I'm going to meet up my two seams, my front, my side seams, and I'm gonna go to the back. And I'm gonna clip the back and I'm gonna go to the front and clip the front because I want to know where my uh, halves are so I can do the same thing to my bodice uh, I have my two side seams together and then I'm gonna go to the back ah, and then I'm gonna go to the front um, just because I want to make sure that they're even there's no stretching there's no gathering so uh, I just want to make sure that I'm uh, touching it to the right side and you also want to make sure this is my front so you want to make sure that your front is being attached to the front of your skirt so here's this is my front um, so we're gonna pin right sides together that's my front this is my front right sides together the front of my bodice to the right side of my front of my skirt and then I'm gonna meet the side seams I'm just tucking in this bodice into my skirt right sides together is what I'm doing then the back where I marked you want to make sure that they're even and then my last side like I said I'm just tucking my shirt my top into my skirt right sides together and we are literally done done okay so now i'm going to sew those raw edges together and i always start at the back um, because if i'm gonna again if i'm gonna have a seam i want it to be in the back and you want to make sure you are catching all three layers your bodice outer and liner in your skirt three layers and then you go to the next section make sure all the other stuff is out of the way at the bottom you don't want to catch that skirt coming up or something so you want to make sure you remove it if it's in the way 
and then even out to make sure they're all even, all layers. Okay, next section. Make sure all layers are even again. Remember, you're not doing any pooling, you're just letting it soak. No need for pooling. And this is my last section. So excited. And now we're gonna turn my dress around. And if you're already hemmed, you are finished. And, um, sorry, my, there we go. If uh, you have a little bit of rippling right here, you just go in it with your iron and your steam. And that's how you get rid of that. Perfecto. How beautiful is this dress? Now I'm just gonna go ahead and hem it and that's it, I'm done. I hope you guys had a great time with the sew along. I sure did, I enjoyed it. Please let me know if you have any comments, questions, um, anything you wanna add below. Um, I love some uh, conceptive criticism. If there's something I did that you say, hey, you could do it this way, that would be better. Um, I'd love to hear it. Um, again, our Facebook page, our link to our Facebook page and our um, Instagram is below. So please come and share all your makes with us and come see what everybody else is making. If you have not subscribed, hit the subscribe button, go subscribe and let me know below so you can be entered to win that $50 gift certificate for Ellie and Mac. And I can't wait to see all your makes and I'll see you all next time. Bye.